Hey guys, welcome to Hip Use History, where you're not gonna watch a history lecture, how about that? We've been doing this in some new episodes where we're kind of throwing out these big ideas that are kind of in the sphere of political talk and then having you guys engage in the American sport of political debate down in the comments below. So one of the kind of ideas out there right now is this idea of having states call for a new constitutional convention. And most people aren't aware that there is this constitutional mechanism to bypass the federal government. There's a group called the Citizens for Self-Government, the CSG, that's already had nine states use their state legislatures to propose to Congress that we call for a new convention. Now, if we rewind the tape a little bit, we wanna make sure everyone on the same page, if you know what I mean. You're certainly aware of Article 5 of the Constitution. This is kind of the amendment procedure. And if you remember your history, you know that in the first Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, we made a boo-boo. All of the states had to come together to agree to change the Constitution. That made those Articles of Confederation very rigid, and that's why we called for a constitutional convention, kind of an illegal one, to write this new Constitution. So when they came up with the amendment procedure, Procedure, they wanted to kind of move the goalposts a little bit, not make it that difficult, but also kind of make it a hurdle, which would be difficult to change the Constitution. But there's also sewn into this idea the idea of federalism, that not only do we have a central government that's very important and has supremacy and yada, 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 but you also have this idea that it was the states that created that monster. It was the states that created the union. Therefore, if we're going to give the monster the right to amend the Constitution, in a sense, you should be able to bypass the monster. You should be able to change the Constitution without having to consult the monster. Now, I'm not saying I believe the federal government is a monster, but for the purposes of this discussion, there are people in this group, specifically the Citizens for Self-Government, that believe the federal government is a monster. So I've gotten off track, right? So let's talk about Article 5. Now, there have been 33 proposed constitutional amendments and 27 success stories because it's a two-step process. Now, the way that it's been used 33 times to propose new amendments has been through the traditional way of two-thirds of both houses, getting two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and now it's a proposed amendment, and it gets thrown into the ratification sphere, where you, sphere, where you have to get three-fourths of the states. you got to get 36 states nowadays to ratify those amendments that were proposed by both houses of Congress. That's federalism. But the other unique way is to bypass Congress altogether and have two-thirds of the states call for a constitutional convention to propose amendments or specific amendments. And there's some debate about how much power they would have to bring up new amendments and whether or not that had to be in the original proposal, but I'm getting off track. It would still, though, have to go through that three-fourths ratification process in the state legislatures or by state conventions. So even though we're going to talk about this in a moment and say, the magic number is 34. Once you get 34 states, you can change the Constitution. Well, yeah, but you're going to need a few more in order to ratify that puppy. Now, one of the reasons why we've never gotten that far is Congress has been on to this, and they don't want this to happen because that's the central government. They would be giving up their ability to change the Constitution to the states. So in every instance where they've gotten close, Congress has jumped in, and they've proposed the amendment. So the 17th Amendment, direct election of senators, that was going through that process of having states kind of call for a convention to propose this amendment and go to right to that ratification. But Congress jumped in and did that for themselves. And it happened in other times. It happened for the 18th Amendment, the 21st Amendment, the 22nd Amendment, the 25th Amendment. So Congress has been really weary of letting states do this. Another really interesting example of this idea of Congress being really worried is uh, Senator Sam Everett. In 1971 and 1973, he proposed a bill which would use the elastic clause to define what a constitutional convention would look like. Now, all it says in the Constitution is if two-thirds of the states propose a convention, Congress will call for one. 
but it doesn't define what that convention would look like and how much power they would have. So Congress has been worried about what's called a runaway convention, where you know if you got two thirds of the states, even very small populated states representing a small fraction of the American citizenry, they could change a lot. They could write in a lot of new amendments. So Everett, he proposed we use the elastic clause, and he wrote a bill to define that convention, and then the House of Representatives didn't pass it, so nothing ever happened. So we have no precedent. We We have no examples because it's never happened. Now, the Citizens for Self-Government did have a mock convention just to see what would have happened. And they actually proposed six amendments. You probably could guess a few of them, uh, term limits, balanced budget amendment. There was one in there for a super majority if you wanted to pass a tax. And there was also an amendment that gave states the ability to just kind of void and nullify uh, bureaucratic regulations and such like that. So right now, at least the group that's trying it, Citizens for Self-Government, these are right groups, libertarian groups. And that's why generally progressives kind of you know, I don't know if this is a good idea because they're not the ones that are supporting the proposal of this convention. And of course, people on the Republican side say, this is the uniqueness of our constitution, that Madison wrote the constitution for a reason this way, to give states the ability, if there was enough of a majority, to make sure that the federal government stayed in its place. So what do you guys think? Do you think a convention, that it's about time we put our heads together and wrote some new things into the Constitution? Or does the talk of that make your skin go, why don't you leave it down in the comments below because this is a good one. All right, guys, make sure that if you haven't subscribed to Hip Use History, you do that right now because it's the right thing to do. And make sure you always remember, and I always say it at the end of every lecture because I believe it with all my heart, where attention goes, energy flows, and we'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons.